The reason I started a drone flight school was to offer very affordable and custom drone programs. Most people learn hands-on, so we focus on personalized individual training. I love teaching and I love giving new flyers a perspective that many instructors can't give because of the experience that I have. Anybody can teach you how to fly, but the ability to teach you based on the perspectives of real vast client jobs is invaluable. Every instructor on our team has hundreds of hours of experience flying for clients. Dave King, the founder of Steel City Flight Academy, has thousands of flights under his belt and was custom building drones well before ready-to-fly drones were available. Dave has worked with hundreds of clients all over the country through his aerial production company. Dave has combined his background with aviation and drones to design the ultimate course for individuals wanting a professional career in the drone industry. What I really like about Steel City Drones Flight Academy is their focus on safety and risk management. Going into it, we really had no idea what was involved in using drones for commercial purposes and what it took to keep everyone safe and accident free. So you have to remember, we're all human. We make mistakes. So we had to put ourselves in the best possible situation for success because we do make mistakes. We're constantly assessing our hazards and our risks. And it starts all the way from pre-planning to your pre-flight, to launching the drone and getting it up in the air, the actual flight portion, and then recovering the aircraft. It's not something that happens maybe once a flight or maybe once before you go out and once you're on site. It happens every second of every moment and all the stages of flying. So when we're actually coming out and trying to do a risk assessment, you know, in addition to thinking about what some of the risks are, you know, I'm thinking about having my mission plan, my flight plan, are ready, all in my head, about what I'm doing. I started building a heavy lifter octocopter. That was my very first drone that I started working with. It was an octocopter, so that means eight motors, eight props, eight booms. And I was trying to use it to be able to lift a digital SOR at the time, which was a 5D Mark II. And through trial and error, even on my very first attempt, it crashed. I had no prior RC flying experience, so to say that I had my growing pains was an understatement. Back then, the technology was extremely antiquated, especially on the gimbal side of things as far as stability goes. I probably have over a thousand hours alone testing gimbal equipment, and just heavy lifters in general, trying to make the best combination work because there was no formula for success. In 2014, I got my 333 exemption, but that exemption required me to go out and get a license to fly an airplane. Now, I made the mistake of choosing to get what's called a sports pilot's license instead of a regular private pilot's license. Why that was a mistake is because the type of airplane that you're allowed to train on and use is extremely light, much lighter than a regular Cessna 172. My, my CFI at the time told me that, you know, if you learn how to fly and learn how to land on this aircraft, you can fly just about anything, which made me feel good. And the great thing about getting my pilot's license is that it gave me a truly different perspective that I never had before prior to flying an aircraft. It gives you the perspective of you have to have the mentality of looking at the worst possible thing that can ever go wrong. So as an example, on my check ride, my instructor, as part of the test, would pull the power completely out on the aircraft at random and required me to go through an emergency landing. What are we doing? The engine just failed. I'm going to try to start it. Yep. Okay, up, oh, nope, it's not going to start. Okay, car oh. beats out. Yeah. Uh, this is the idle. Yep. Uh, 7700, 121.5. Make my mayday call, mayday, mayday. That really gave me a complete appreciation of what's the worst thing that can happen on a flight. And I really translate that into my flight training for my students because there is a lot of things that can go wrong with a drone flight. 
you want to be prepared for when something does go wrong instead of panicking. And panicking is the worst thing as a drone pilot that can happen. And it's happened to me when I was in my, you know, starting out training phases. Uh, I know what that feeling is like. And I try to at least prepare my students so that they don't experience that so that I want to put them in the best possible position for success. It's really exciting to see where drone technology is going and where this industry is going to be in like even five years. I really look forward to going down that path with you guys and if you have any questions again please always feel free to reach out to me and I'll glad to help you out as any way I can. Thanks.